Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to show you is how we can go about factorizing a cubic polynomial by using the factor theorem which we talked about in an earlier tutorial. Now before we start, if you get a question like this and it's not got f of x is identical to this, then I would always suggest that you put that. So let's start with let f of x. We'll define f of x as being identical to this expression here, this cubic polynomial, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. If we do this, it just makes it a lot easier to present the solution. Okay, what we need to do now is to substitute values of x into here and what we're trying to do is find some value of x which will make this zero. But I just want to give you a few tips before we start. Remember that when you factorize f of x, okay, let's just put f of x over here for the moment, it's going to consist of at least two factors, okay? One of them will be in one bracket here and the other one will be here. Now, this particular polynomial has plus 6 on the end. And what we know is that there's going to be a number on the end of this bracket here and there's going to be a number at the end of this bracket here. And these two numbers are going to be multiplied together and they're going to end up giving you the plus 6. So what could they be? Well, if they're to be integers, then it could be a 1 and a 6. It could be, say, a 2 and a 3. And don't forget, it could be minuses as well. So we've got quite a combination of numbers that we could choose. It would be silly, really, to choose something like a 5, say. 5 times something else giving 6, well, OK, it's got to be 6 fifths, but I wouldn't really encourage that, OK? I would stick with the integers, like we have here. So, what I'm saying is then, let's start by trying, say, x is 1. And if you were to do f of 1, what we would have is f of 1 would equal, we would substitute x is 1 in here and have 2 times 1 cubed, minus 3 times 1 squared, minus 11 times 1, plus the 6. And if we work that out, what does it come to? It comes to minus 6. So it didn't come to 0. If it did, then x minus 1 by the factor theorem would have been a factor of f of x. OK, so 1 didn't work. What you could try is, say, another value of x. Don't forget to try negative values of uh, your x value. So, in other words, try maybe f of minus 1. Well, if you do do that, I'll leave it up to you to just try that. But if you do substitute x is minus 1 in there, you get 12, not 0 as we require. What would you do next? Maybe you'd try x is 2. So try f of 2. But if you did try that one, you'd find you get minus 12. Just check it out, OK? 2 didn't work, didn't give a 0. So what would you most probably try next? Minus 2, f of minus 2. So if we substitute x is minus 2 into here, you've got 2 times minus 2 then, all cubed, minus 3 times minus 2, all squared, minus 11 times minus 2, plus 6. And if you work this one out, what you get here is minus 16, minus 12, plus 22, plus 6, and that comes to 0. So, we hit the jackpot. That means that now that we've got f of minus 2 equaling 0, by this line here, you can see that the q here corresponds to the 2, so it means that x plus 2 is a factor of f of x. So if we put that down, we've got that therefore x plus 2 is a factor. Now, once we've got that x plus 2 is a factor, once we've got one factor, we know then that basically f of x is identical to x plus 2 
multiply it by some other factor. Let's just put a question mark there. Now there's several ways that we can get this factor. It's often called a quadratic factor in cases like this. This one's a linear factor and then we need to multiply it by a quadratic factor. Something that's got that starts off with an x squared term, then an x term, then a constant. Now to get that quadratic factor, one way that we could do this is to divide both sides of this equation here by x plus 2. And that would give us the quadratic factor, the question mark in there, it would be identical to f of x divided by x plus 2. So what we could do to get it then is to do algebraic long division. That's one way and that's the way I'm going to show you in this tutorial. In another tutorial I'll show you another way that we can get that quadratic factor. Okay, what we'll do is algebraic long division to get that quadratic factor here then. And so what we have then is for the quadratic factor, I would always suggest that we write that in for the quadratic factor. Just gives the reader some idea what we're doing. Hopefully, anyway. Okay, so for the quadratic factor, let's put a line down there, section it off. I'm assuming that you're familiar with algebraic long division. If not, you can always go to another video on my website. Look under the main index of tutorials for algebraic long division. Or you might even see a link on this page if you're viewing it on my website. OK, we've got to do x plus 2 then into f of x, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 to get that quadratic factor. In the usual way, what do you multiply x by to give 2x cubed, where it's got to be 2x squared? Multiply the 2x squared then with the x plus 2 and you get 2x cubed and 2x squared times 2 is 4x squared. Subtract to find out what the remainder is here. So you've got 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, that's 0, minus 3x squared minus plus 4x squared is minus 7x squared. Bring down the minus 11x, so just mark that in there, minus 11x. Start all over again, what do you multiply the x by to get the minus 7x squared, so that's going to be minus 7x, put it up there. Multiply minus 7x with the x plus 2 and you get minus 7x x squared minus 14x subtract to get the remainder so do that minus 7x squared minus minus 7x squared is 0 so you now have minus 11x minus minus 14x which is going to be plus 3x or just simply 3x bring the 6 down now put it there what do you multiply the x by to get 3x and it's going to be plus 3. 3 times x plus 2 gives 3x plus and 3 twos a 6. We've got an identical value here so that when we subtract to find out what the remainder is we get 0. And This proves also that x plus 2 is a factor of f of x because we had no remainder. It went in exactly. So here's our quadratic factor now. 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So at this point then we can say that therefore f of x is identical to our linear factor x plus 2 multiplied by now our quadratic factor which is the 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. And check out your quadratic factor Quite often that quadratic factor factorizes again into two linear factors and this one is no exception, it does. So we've got x plus 2, the first factor, and then this quadratic factor splits into two linear factors and in the usual way, just factorize it. We've got 2x and x giving the 2x squared. We need a minus 1 there and a minus 3 there. Minus 1 times minus 3 gives the plus 3 and you'll notice you get minus 6x minus another x which is the minus 7x. So there you have f of x 
or 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 fully factorized in three linear factors. It's worth pointing out at this stage, by the way, that just note, um, if you had got a question which said solve the equation f of x equals 0, you'd first factorize f of x, okay? And then once factorized, we can say that each of the factors would equal 0, and that would lead to x equaling minus 2. For this factor, 2x minus 1 would equal 0. That would lead to x equaling plus a half. And for the factor x minus 3 equaling 0, x would equal 3. But we're not being asked that in this particular question. Okay, so don't write that down Okay, as the answer to this, because it wasn't an equation. It's just factorize it. But it's just in case it ever did say, as I say, f of x equals 0, and you had to solve it they would be the solutions. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this tutorial on factorizing a cubic by using this particular method to get the second factor by using algebraic long division. As I said, I've got another tutorial where we can avoid doing this and uh, you might want to have a look at that one.